In addition to the geometric series, another type of series where we can get concrete results for the sum is the telescoping series. So let's consider the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared plus n. We want to figure out what we can do this with this with what little techniques we have at this time. It's not, definitely not a geometric series, so let's see what we can do. I can apply partial fractions to this, okay, or sequence, and we'll see if anything interesting comes out of that. So let's recall partial fractions. I'm going to take 1 over n squared plus n. We factor it. It's going to factor into n times n plus 1. So partial fraction says you're going to give a term to the n, a term to the n plus 1, and then we're going to put constants on top of each of those to be determined later. We'll clear the denominators. That's going to be 1 equals n plus 1a plus nb. And then I can get a and b just by targeting different values of n. So if I let n be equal to 0, the b term drops out, and I'm left with a equals 1. If I let n be equal to minus 1, the a term is going to drop out, and I'm left with 1 equals minus b, or b equals minus 1. So when I pull this apart, I'm going to get 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Now what I want to do is let's take a look at the partial sums for this series. For my first term, I'm just going to put in my 1. It's going to give me a 1 minus a half if I use our sequence written in terms of the partial fraction. I go to the next term. Next partial sum says add up the first two. Well, that's going to give me 1 minus a half plus a half minus a third. Gives me 1 minus a third. If you notice, what's happening here is we're going to keep the outside terms. All the terms on the inside are going to collapse. So if I go to the nth partial sum, let's take a look. Of 1 minus a half, a half minus a third, third minus a fourth, all the way up through 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. All the terms on the inside match up, except up the sign. So what's going to happen is they're all going to drop out. They're going to telescope. And that's going to leave me with 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Now, we take the limit of our partial sum. So n goes to infinity. What happens here is we keep the 1, and then 1 over n plus 1 is going to get driven down to 0. So I wind up with a limit of 1. By definition, that's what we call the sum of our series. So here, for this telescoping series, the sum of our series is going to be equal to 1. So the example seems like it kind of magically worked out. Telescoping series, a little bit difficult to identify out in the wild, but they're real easy to cook up on your own. So let's see how we go about that. So start with a function, say defined on the positive real numbers, with its limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equal to 0. Could define a sequence a sub n by f of n minus f of n plus 1. Then we're going to consider the series for a sub n. Partial sums, s sub 1 is equal to a1, which is f1 minus f2. s sub 2 is equal to a1 plus a2, which is f1 minus f2 plus f2 minus f3. The inside collapses to leave me with f1 minus f3. And in general, we'll see that the nth partial sum is just going to be f of 1 minus f of n plus 1. So again, the entire inside of the sum of a1 through a n is going to collapse out, leave me with things on the end. I take the limit as n goes to infinity of our partial sums. That's going to leave me with f of 1, just a constant which goes outside the limit. And then we know the limit as n goes to infinity of f of n plus 1 is going to be equal to 0. It's going to have the same limit as f of x. So we wind up with our limit of the partial sums being able to f of 1. And remember, that says our series converges, and its sum is going to be equal to f of 1. Let's see how that factors in with the example we just looked at. In that case, we're going to have f of x equal to 1 over x. Our a sub n is 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, as we saw. Collapses down to 1 over n squared plus n. And the sum is going to be equal to f of 1, which is equal to 1. So that agrees with everything we saw in the first example. For another example, let's try f of x equal to 1 over x squared. In this case, our a sub n is going to be equal to 1 over n squared minus 1 over n plus 1 squared. We clean that up, and that gives me 
2n plus 1 over n to the fourth plus 2n cubed plus n squared. And I'd never guess if that's telescoping series just by looking at it. Okay, our sum is just given by f of 1, and that's going to be equal to 1. Final one that's slightly interesting. Take f of x equal to a half raised to the x power. Our a sub n is going to be equal to a half n minus a half n plus 1. I can factor a half to the n out of this, which leaves me with a half n, then 1 minus a half, or a half n plus 1. So I write out the few terms, first few terms of the series. It's going to give me a quarter plus a quarter times a half plus a quarter half squared, and so on. So I notice that this is a geometric series with a equal to a quarter and r equal to a half. So since the absolute value of r is less than 1, we know this converges, and we have a formula for the sum. So it's going to be a times 1 over 1 minus r. So a quarter, take 1 minus a half and flip it over. So our sum is going to be equal to a half. Now, by our rule for the telescoping series, we're also going to have that s, our sum, is equal to f of 1. But f of 1 is just going to be equal to a half also. So this agrees with what we would get from the geometric series.